Hey, what's up? So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some general stuff uh, with regards to uh, doing a uh, interactive fiction game. Uh, this is the Adrift editor that I've got my game in. <clears throat> but before I did uh, any of that, I kind of just uh, emptied my brain into um, a note app that I like. Uh, I use Obsidian. I've used many uh, note-taking things in the past. Um, you know, I had uh, physical journals. You know, I kept with me. You know, moved around a lot. For a long time, didn't really do anything except like Google Keep because um, it was super easy to add stuff on my phone, super easy to get to it on a web browser. Um, used Notion for a while and now I'm using Obsidian. I quite like it. It's super popular because it's very, it's very simple if you want it to be. And it's very not simple if you want it to be. Um, and I think especially since it added the canvas option recently where you can do like mind mapping and stuff with your notes. Um, it's really become a, I think a really solid, um, you know, app just right out of the box. Um, if you have ever watched any videos that people have done on it, not just obsidian, but like productivity, note-taking type stuff in general. It's all very weird. Um, it's all very weird, you know. I like, uh, watch a lot, I like a lot, but it's all very weird. And especially because um, it, it just doesn't have to be complicated like people make it out to be. Um, this is obsidian right here. And uh, you can just use it like if you find yourself saving random little tidbits in notepad on your desktop like just instead start doing that same thing in obsidian or in a different note-taking app don't worry about anything else here's your notes okay right eventually you'll make little notes you'll make little notes eventually you'll explore or find out something Oh, hey, I can make a link to another note. Oh, hey, this will show me what notes are linked to it, you know. You go looking through the plugins, you find some themes. Um, but really, you can just, just, if there's any, if there's ever been a program you wanted to try out, but you feel like it's, it offers you so much that you can't take advantage of, like, just understand, doesn't matter. Just start using it in whatever ways you can, and you'll just build up to being, um, you'll, you'll build up to whatever use case fits with fits for you. Um, <clears throat> maybe that is super advanced automation and stuff, maybe it's not. But just don't be scared, hop in there. Um, just start keeping stuff, taking notes, doing, you know, if you've been doing it, if you haven't been doing it, just baby steps is completely fine um, in anything. Uh, this is my general Obsidian Vault. Um, so this is like the main file explorer, but I generally use um, File Tree Alternative plugin, which is just in the you know a community made plugin that you can download from within the um, settings here. And what that does is it lets you basically focus in on folders. So go back to root. You get the main list of everything that's just in the file system there. And when you right click, you go focus on folder. And then it basically gives that folder the appearance of being your root directory. So you're not going to accidentally scroll up past you know, the project you're working on. Um, it it kind of lets you sort of separate whatever you're working on at that moment into its own file explorer. And then when you click on one of the folders, it lists all the files down here. 
And there's a bunch of options for how to how this will actually work. But that's what I like to keep it. That's what I like to use. So this is the main uh, thing. Uh, an MOC, some people might say. It's just, uh, it's just like a folder note. That's all it is. I've got a little description of the game, link to the developing tool set website, Adrift. Um, this is a simple query that grabs any um, incomplete tasks from any file in the same folder, and that propagates into subfolders. Um, and then I've got the directory, which is plain markdown links to all the notes in that directory and the subdirectories. This is done by the Waypoint plugin. Um, I really like the Waypoint plugin for a lot of reasons. Um, it's super easy to use. It actually makes links. So if you've used some, uh, some of the plugins in Obsidian that lets you navigate through different folders and different notes and stuff, they don't actually make connections that Obsidian recognizes, um, which can affect, you know, backlinks and like their graph and all of that stuff. But this is an actual link that's right here in the note. So the graph is functioning, it works on Obsidian Publish, all of that stuff. Um, so, yeah. Very simple here. This automatically updates. This automatically updates. Um, I've got a folder for characters. Uh, game notes, which is just kind of like general stuff. Um, uh, so the uh, IF game, so Murder at the Montana, you arrive at the home of your son, the luxurious building, the Montana. When you arrive, the front door is left open and the home clearly looks upended, as if a struggle had just happened. And then I've just got a stream of thought stuff about the game. I've got little lines separating thoughts. Um, so you're the player, a retired police detective. You just found your son dead on the floor of his new condo in the luxurious Montana building, downtown Seattle. Uh, from the direction of the relaxation room, you hear a voice that is immediately recognized, your other son. So just going through, emptying out everything. Um, you start with a cane and a gun with some bullets. You've got spiritual attunement. Um, so basically, um, as the player goes through this gigantic house, um, they will encounter people and events that will um, mess with their anxiety level. Um, the main way that you keep your anxiety level down is by uh, discovering uh, beers and then drinking the beer. You drink the beer and that, raises, that lowers your anxiety. Um, there's also little puzzles that uh, the player can find themselves in that when they solve them, it will uh, mess with the anxiety or maybe give them an item. It will also mess with their spiritual attunement and the more attuned spiritually they get, um, descriptions of rooms change, um, descriptions of items will change, and uh, they will gain more insight into what's going on with um, the player's sons and how to stop it. And that's basically um, the general, uh, you know, general gameplay is you find these puzzles that when you solve them, they advance you towards um, understanding what the uh, what's needed to unravel the mystery. Um, <clears throat> got a list of um, systems needed. So I need um, a way to move an NPC around on its own intelligently to a point um, in response to the player. Um, I need the attunement system that's going to um, change how the, the locations you're in are perceived. Um, there's a kind of a small ritual mini game that's like the ultimate end goal. Um, I need to figure out a way to make that something that's interesting and not entirely either too hard or too easy. Um, and then TV channels, uh, I, there's going to be a lot of rooms and there's going to be a lot of TVs. And I want the TVs to turn on and off and I want, um, the TVs when you turn them on to, uh, describe what they're playing. And every time you turn on a TV, I want it to have a different description of what's playing. Um, 
So that's that's just another, like just an interactive thing. Not um, you know, very little gameplay there. That's just more me wanting to have fun, and like do weird descriptions of episodes or like other sitcom shows and describe an episode that didn't actually happen or whatever. Uh, the cold ones, all the beers are called cold ones. Um, <clears throat> in a drift, you can uh, make synonyms. So if uh, the player types in a specific word, the interpreter will actually see it as typing in a different word. So cold ones, beer, there's a bunch of stuff that will all work. So that, especially for something like that, which is kind of just like a colloquial like nickname, like an old-timey nickname for uh, a beer, you know, um, I didn't want anyone to get confused or um, unable to, like, describe the word correctly. Um, and then ghostly replays, that's, like, the little mini games. Um, and, like, if we go to so the, the special items that do the, the ghostly replays, the little, like, mini games, um, <clears throat> I call them ghostly replays, like... Because I think they're going to um, be tied into the history of the dad and the sons. Uh, so it's like reliving um, a memory, um, sometimes maybe from a perspective that he didn't have before because it's coming from like one of the sons. Um, so some of them can just straight up increase your attunement or decrease your anxiety. Um, like a lot of the early ones, it's going to be mostly if a character, if you find it, you're just gonna get a bonus because we kind of need to just get you started moving up and learning how to um, what these stats mean and all that. So that's the simple ones that you'll find early on are gonna be just you find it, you use it, you get a bonus, and you kind of just um, are, are told or shown how the system works. Um, you could also get multiple choices. This one I'm not even technically sure how, um, like, I assume, straight up, I assume that the uh, editor has a way to ask the user a multiple choice question and, you know, respond based on, you know, what they chose. Um, but I don't actually know that yet, but. Uh, so you might also get um, a description of, like, some sort of conflict from the character's past, and uh, the you'll get multiple choices on how you would react and each one of those might have different consequence or a, or a prize associated for example so just stuff like that you know um, I just kind of tried to separate out everything um, if I click under television under the objects folder it's just um, this is what it looks like I'll use for the TV thing um, Basically, this is a function that you put in any text box when you're doing the game, and it just interprets it as a random one of these. And so every time that thing is called, uh, it picks a new thing, so it doesn't lock in what it's chosen, which is what I wanted for the, the TV. Um, let's go to... Um, so we got uh, the locations... So three floors, the, fir uh, the third floor just has a couple rooms. Second floor has a lot of rooms. That's, um, that's a lot. And then uh, um, the first one is, first floor has like seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. And so I've used canvas for the, uh, the directions and the, basic layout of the room. So entrance right here, uh, living room, kitchen, mini library, relaxation room, guest room. Uh, there is one thing missing here that I added after the fact. Um, there is a hallway right here now and then this is how it gets into the second floor. But you can see those arrows pointing all the different directions. Um, there's even like little descriptions that you can read in there. So, and those, you can see links. We got a link to television, which will link you back to that um, explanation of how I'll do the, um, the display of that. 
So pretty cool. Um, floor two map. So this one's also missing the hallways because I wasn't sure how to connect certain things. So I added hallways. So and then um, yeah, so more in some cases, I'm sure. Actually, maybe like 2016. I feel like 2016 is probably, probably about when. So this was how I planned out a Legend of Grimrock 2 mod. Um, each map tile has custom script to build the floor. A table of special rooms is kept. Uh, oh, there we go. We got spawn room, populate space, decorate space. Large rooms are 10 by 10, small rooms 5 by 5. Oh, look okay. at So the way I did this was I just wrote um, uh, scripts that would place out the rooms like empty space, like a five by five room, 10 by 10 room, connect them. And then a script that went through each one and populated it with items, populated it with decorations. And then while it's picking like what room to do, it would uh, pick special rooms. Uh, and it would also randomly put in, uh, basically it would randomly like run other scripts to put puzzles in. So there would be a script that would have like, um, you know, two plates, uh, like plates like squares on the floor that are pressure sensitive. Um, and it would have like two rocks and then it would have like, you know, two chests and two keys, right? And it would list exactly what would, what items would be needed to solve that. And then it would place them around kind of randomly basically you know like as long as they weren't too close to other stuff uh, so what you would get was a pretty randomly done or you know procedurally done um, uh, little like map they would have puzzles that um, weren't entirely static there were special rooms they would have like self-contained puzzles that would be basically the same each time so, let's see, we've got, uh, we got stat tables. We got the stats, the little, the stuff that's uh, selected when you're randomly generating a, a weapon. We got uh, the, uh, Rune socketing system from a uh, stone keep, but in Legend of Grimoire 2. So, yeah, tons and tons of little scribbles. Um, in some cases, like plain language, you know, like plain language logic working out how I would, you know, um, program one of the functions, you know. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the fun stuff. Oh, uh, my tips and tricks. Um, anytime I have a, uh, I uh, find something particularly interesting that um, I don't have a use for in that moment, um, or maybe just one that I do have a use for, but I still want to document it because it's uh, just I might need that. Um, I won't remember everything about it, you know. Um, I just put it down here. 
And uh, if I come across an obstacle and I find out how to get across that obstacle, I put it down there. Um, if I find a neat thing in the help or a, a cool forum post with some code in it or like a logic example I like, put it in there. And just as you keep going, you just keep building up. I do want to talk more about Obsidian um, in the future. And, um, yeah, so I do want to uh, talk about Obsidian more in the future. Um, I'm doing a, uh, I'm working on a, another thing that I'm recording uh, the entire process, which includes, um, you know, Obsidian and taking notes and uh, turning those notes into scripts and into uh, whatever else I need, and then, you know, video editing and all that stuff. So, that'll probably be, like, a pretty hefty look at it in, like, a real-world use case 